every artist has a toolbox. Inside this toolbox are the seven elements of art. They're line, shape, color, form, space, texture, and value. There's seven total. This video is going to focus on the element of art, form. Let's start by defining what is form. And we can do that by first defining what is not form. This is an example of a shape. It's two-dimensional. It's not a form. Now if we add that extra dimension, it becomes 3D. Anything that's 3D is a form. The three dimensions are length, width, and height. Let's look at this rectangular prism and define which parts are the length, width, and height. There's three measurements, which makes it three-dimensional. When we refer to form, there are two different categories. There's actual form, which is like a sculpture. And then there's the illusion of form. So this is when artists make something look three-dimensional on a two-dimensional plane, like a drawing of a cube. This is an example of an actual form. It's a sculpture. Viewers can walk around it. And when we can walk around an actual form, we call this an in-the-round sculpture. There are a few ways that artists can give the illusion of form on a two-dimensional picture plane. One method is by perspective, like making a square look like a cube. And the second way is shading, like adding that range of value on a circle to make it become a sphere. So we can use lines and value to give the illusion of form. There are lots of different names for three-dimensional forms. Some examples include a cylinder, a cone, a sphere, a cube, and a pyramid, just to name a few. Let's practice creating the illusion of form on a few different objects. Let's start by drawing a circle and turning it into a sphere by using some regular shading. When we're creating form, we want to make sure that we have a consistent light source and then we have a range of value from light to dark. Let's practice drawing the 3D form a cube. And for this example, we're going to use hatching and cross hatching. There are two different ways to draw a cube. The first way is by drawing a square and then adding another square and then connecting all of the corners. This is a great approach to keep things nice and straight. You can also go in and erase out any excess lines if you don't want your object to be transparent. The second technique is to draw a square and then draw three diagonal lines extending from the corners and then connect the corners. You can use whichever method is easiest for you. To create form on this cube, we're going to make one side look really dark by cross-hatching a lot of lines. One side look like a mid-tone by adding lines that go over top of one another and adding a little bit of value on the top. Let's also add a dark shadow being cast on the darkest side. Our third activity is to draw a cone with stippling. Stippling is using lots of tiny dots. To make a cone, we basically just make an upside down V and then a smiley face underneath. And for stippling, we're gonna draw lots and lots of tiny dots. The more dots we add, the darker it will be. The less dots we have, the lighter it'll be. Stippling takes a lot of time and patience. So here is an example of a cone with stippling. Always have a light source and then have the shadow on the opposite side. Our last practice activity is to draw a cylinder with scumbling, lots of squiggles to show value. To make the cylinder, we're going to draw a flattened oval, two straight lines on the left and right, 
and then a nice smile on the bottom. We're gonna give a light source and then explore some squiggly lines that gradually fade from dark to light. To render nice value, we're also gonna add a little cast shadow with nice dark scumbled squiggles. There are two types of forms. The first is geometric forms, and the second is organic forms. Geometric forms are angular, regular, and structured. They're very straight and use those forms that we learned in geometry, like rectangles, squares, triangles, and more. Here's an example of a design geometric sculpture. We're gonna make it look like it has lots of form by adding some value and shadows to our sculpture. On another pedestal, let's create an organic sculpture. These type of forms are free flowing and curvy. They're natural and a little bit more unpredictable. Let's also add some value so that it looks like there's some sense of three-dimensionality on our organic sculpture. So again, this is an example of an organic sculpture. If a sculpture is organic and looks like a living thing, this is called biomorphic. So, how will you use form in your artwork? I hope you found this video tutorial to be helpful. Feel free to subscribe for more videos from Make a Mark Studios, helping you to make your mark through art.